So basically what I'm talking to you about, as Pete said, or Dr. Bablis, is neurocranial restructuring, which is basically a new cranial technique that's been introduced into Australia in the last six months to basically improve symmetry, for one, and work on three different aspects of the nervous system, whether it be biochemistry, whether it be your emotional state and stress-related responses and things like that, and, as, and structural uh, integrity and so forth. So, basically, I'm just going to go through a little bit of the philosophy. Then we're going, to get th we're going to go through a little bit of general information about the technique, a bit of the anatomy and structure about, uh, about what we're trying to achieve with uh, neurocranial restructuring, the technique, some of the effects and results, which will be um, a little bit of photos, and then just the, there's a bibliography at the end. So, in terms of the philosophy, the technique is basically uh, a, man a manipulation process that we use to unwind the body and to unwind it into its original shape and, and design, basically. So we were all born with, well, most of us were born with imperfect symmetry, and the reason for that is uh, due to uh, most of us being uh, uh, going through the trauma of vaginal births and things like that. Um, so our goal with this is to ultimately create better symmetry in the face and cranium to alter the symmetry throughout the body. So the way it works is we make careful analysis um, of the body, um, of the body's proprioception to determine exact the precise areas of the skull that actually need to be unlocked and moved and shaped and, remold and remolded, so to speak. Um, now this unlocking basically allows connective tissues inside the head to release their tensions and move the structures back into the original position. Now the reason why it's so important to work on connective tissues, connective tissue pulls in, the, bone, uh, pulls in the, the structure of the skull and inside the spinal column and also into the, the fascial layers um, in the rest of the body and it pulls everything really, really tight. Now a lot of um, postural related uh, problems particularly are controlled by connective tissue tension which largely has a lot to do with the connective tissue tension in the head. So if we can change connective tissue in the head, usually that's going to cause a residual effect down in the posture in the body and so forth, which usually is why we can change postural positions in four days, um, change muscle tension patterns in the body in four days and things like that, which I'll get into a little bit later. Um, so basically, apart from that as well, the, the eventual result or the big result of NCR is also to create um, optimization of the nervous system. The reason for that particularly is when you're uh, creating more space in the cranial vault, you're actually creating more space for the brain to do its job. And we all know that uh, people who've had head injuries and things like that causes a lot of compression on the nervous system, particularly in the brain, which causes nervous system disorders and comas and so on and so on and so forth. So the more space you create and the less uh, tissue tension inside the cranial vault, the better your nervous system is going to function, which means uh, uh, improvements in biochemistry, structure and emotional states and so on. Um, uh, generally, uh, treatments are scheduled four days in a row. Um, since we've discovered that if you isolate treatments to one every few days or once, once a week or so on and so forth, it actually, to be, it actually appears to be less effective and there's a reason for that. Connective tissue has a lot of cellular memory. So if you just do one treatment, just like a normal cranial treatment for example, um, you're actually not going to, the, the connective tissue won't hold. The connective tissue will always go back to what it knows. That's just how the body works. Um, it's very much like uh, Dr. Bablos was saying about um, conditioned responses. The body, the connective tissue has that same conditioned response. It's been put in that position from the day you were born, maybe even a little bit earlier in utero, um, and it just stays there. So the more we do it closer together, the less chance or opportunity that connective tissue has to go back and regress. So that's why we do it four days in a row. And usually with that, uh, with that method of treatment, um, we create a lot of momentum in the unwinding of that connective tissue and the loosening of it, so to speak, and just keeps on moving and moving and moving for a, for a little while. Um, as, as I was saying, um, it probably takes about three weeks um, up to sometimes f uh, four months for this unwinding to continue going on. The body will keep... Uh, keep shifting in different directions for that period of time and keep moving so that you can continue on in this process. Um, so most people generally, um, it's a progressive thing um, and the reason why it's progressive is bone does shift, it's malleable, it does bend, it's very much alive so um, if, you tr if for some people who are very interested in cosmetic changes, um, they 
they're going to have to kind of invest a bit, a bit of time into this um, to, to get the benefits out of it. Um, the great thing about it is it's less expensive than obviously some other cosmetic uh, alternatives, which is great for some patients who can't afford that. Um, and it creates, uh, I guess, a much more permanent uh, or long-lasting effect, which I guess to some extent is also relative uh, because permanent changes, particularly in cranial structure, are all determined by a patient's activity after they leave a treatment. So if they are um, exposed to a lot of stressful situations or if they have any injuries or anything like that, car accidents and so forth, it can cause regression in cranial structure because it's always going to, if you jar the body in a specific direction, all that, all that jarring creates tension up in the cranials and just will reshift the bones back. And usually if that happens, we get patients in straight away and we do uh, one quick session to just get everything moving back again, get the momentum flowing. Um, also what we tend to do with patients, because we like to show them their before and afters, um, to show how much they change in four days, because the changes are so significant. Even if, the, even if to them uh, the changes appear subtle in the photos, and to us, because we, we can see the differences in what we're testing, uh, the changes are always going to be huge and significant. And, some, and uh, I guess also depending on how much tension is in, in a person's head will also depend on their rate of change and how quickly that actually uh, uh, I guess manifest into what they what they're hoping for. Okay. As I was saying, each sequence is generally long lasting. So with each sequence you have, so if you have a four day sequence to begin with, uh, the changes of that sequence will always last anywhere between three weeks to four months. They'll never regress back to where they were prior to that, unless there was uh, unless there's a serious accident or all these other things that can that can kind of contribute to regression. Um, generally, uh, with most patients that we treat, we give them a list, a guideline of things that they need to kind of adhere to for about three weeks or so after their treatment, just so they can their bodies can get into a nice stability pattern, um, and that keeps everything kind of moving forward. So when we get into the following series, uh, which is usually about two to two to six for on average for most patients, um, the changes are pretty much, they, perm they are, they are per there is permanence in it, but I guess uh, with, every th with uh, anything structural that you're working on, you have to worry about gravity and everything else that kind of is um, applying pressure and force in our body on a daily basis, which can sometimes change the permanence of things. But generally what we tend to do after patients had their four or six series or two or so series, we usually do one a year to maintain and keep everything balanced, just like you would with a car if you take it in for maintenance. Um, so that's basically how it works. Um, so generally the reason why, um, as I was saying, why patients need this treatment um, is because they've had a lot of trauma in their lives. And usually trauma, whether it be, as I was saying, biochemical trauma, uh, emotional trauma, or even structural trauma, can change connective tissue patterns in the body and cause all this tension and reduction in nervous system function, change hormone levels, and so on and so forth, as I'll explain in a moment. So generally, the main, the main job of the spine, as we all know, is to hold up the head and hold up the body. Um, without a spine, uh, basically, you won't be standing at all. Um, Generally, when you have an unstable skull, that means the whole nervous system is going to be unstable too. Because when you've got twisting in the cranial vault, you're going to get contortion and pressure on different parts of the brain, causing changes in postural patterns, changing uh, uh, the balance patterns in the body in terms of um, how well you can stand in certain situations and deal with certain situations. But also in terms of um, emotional states, it affects the way your body processes emotion, particularly if there's a lot of pressure on the frontal lobe because your, your emotions get processed through there. Um, they created and manifested a lot, as, as Dr. Babel was saying, the limbic system, but they need to be transferred into the neocortex to be processed and integrated, as he was saying. So it's very important to release a lot of that pressure so the body can do those sorts of things.